Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt, and today I'll be breaking down the best ETFs in Canada for dividends. These are my favorite Canadian ETFs that pay out a generous dividend that you can hold onto for life and collect that passive income every month or every quarter. Plus, they give you a well-diversified exposure of the Canadian market. I recommend these ETFs for any investor, especially for beginners who aren't ready to buy individual stocks. I'm only going to be talking about ETFs in Canadian dollars that contain Canadian companies, so no ETFs attract the US market. I already have a whole video on my favorite US ETFs. The ETFs I'm talking about today give you purely Canadian income, so keep them in your TFSA, RRSP, or RESP to avoid paying taxes on those dividends. For this video, I'm going to assume that you know what an ETF is, what an MER or management fee is, and the basics of dividends, drips, and capital gains. If you need a refresher, check out my previous videos in my Millennial Investing Guide, especially my ETF Explained, and then come back to this video. Basically, an ETF is a way to buy hundreds of stocks within a single fund. So instead of putting all your eggs in one basket by investing in one company, you're diversifying your portfolio by investing in a little piece of hundreds of companies all at once. And you collect profits through dividends from each of these companies. There are hundreds of ETFs out there, but today I want to focus on dividend ETFs that are broad enough and contain at least 40 holdings. There are some ETFs that only contain 10 companies, but at that point, you might as well just buy those individual stocks and avoid paying that annual management fee. Also, I'm not going to include any covered call ETFs since options trading is definitely riskier and not recommended for beginners. It's easy to get seduced by giant dividend yields of 7% or above, but those ETFs usually remain flat or even lose value over time. Instead, focus on ETFs that contain quality stocks with a bright future. These are the ETFs that you want to own to gain both dividends and capital gains in the long term. Longtime viewers might know that I already made a video on my favorite Canadian dividend ETFs, which was one of my most popular videos, but that was over two years ago, so I wanted to make an updated version with more current information. In that video, I talked about a real estate ETF called VRE, which I still invest in, but I already covered it in detail in my video on the best Canadian REIT ETFs, so click the pop-up at the top right to check that out. So without further ado, let's jump into the best Canadian ETFs for dividends. Let's start with XIC. XIC tracks the TSX capped composite index, so it tracks the 240 largest Canadian companies on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Unlike the other ETFs on this list, XIC is not specifically designed to target high dividend stocks. It just contains the 240 largest companies in Canada, and the Canadian market is dominated by the financial industry, energy companies, utilities, telecommunications, and materials, all of which happen to pay generous dividends. Compare this to the US market, which is absolutely dominated by tech companies like Microsoft and Apple. In fact, eight out of the 10 biggest American companies are tech, and most of them don't pay dividends at all. But in Canada, most of the largest companies do pay dividends, and with XIC, we collect all of them. And so XIC is able to pay out a dividend yield of 2.4%, and this dividend is paid out every quarter. This yield is definitely lower than usual since the share price is trading at all time highs right now, but the dividend just increased this past month and we can definitely expect another increase soon. XIC usually has a dividend yield above 3%. XIC has the lowest dividend on this list, but this ETF does have a few advantages. It has the lowest management fee, and it has the widest diversification. Since XIC is just tracking the Canadian market, it is purely passive management. There are no decisions to make in terms of the breakdown of this fund, and so XIC can get away with rock bottom management fees, with an MER of only 0.06%. So if you have $1,000 invested in XIC, it will only cost you 60 cents a year in management fees. That's almost nothing, and a fraction of what you would pay for a mutual fund. Remember, with ETFs, you'll never see this management fee taken out as a transaction. This fee is built into the price of the share that you see. Another way to consider the effect of management fees is to subtract it away from the dividend yield. So if our dividend yield is 2.4%, but we pay 0.06% in management fees, our net income is 2.34% per year. Of course, this doesn't include capital gains as the value of the ETF grows. This is just the income we obtain every year through dividends. Let's calculate the amount you need to qualify for a drip. 
Remember, a drip allows you to reinvest your dividend and use it to buy more shares of a company rather than receiving cash. And the best part is you don't pay any commissions at all when you use a drip to buy extra shares. This is the best way to invest in the long term, allowing your dividends to compound automatically, giving you true exponential growth. This is especially useful when investing in stocks, but if you're using Quest Trade, which is my favorite online broker, you don't pay commissions on ETFs anyway, so a drip won't save you any money, but it does automate the compounding growth of your ETF, rather than to manually purchase an extra share every time you receive a dividend. So if you'd like to sign up with Quest Trade, use my referral link in the box below to receive $50 in commission-free trade rebates. Plus, I'll give a small referral bonus as well. So back to XIC, with a yield of 2.4% and a share price of $35, you'll need about $5,840 to qualify for a drip. Let's break it down. With $5,840 invested, that 2.4% yield will give you $140 a year in dividends or $35.04 every quarter. The share price of XIC is only $35, and so your dividend is enough to automatically buy an extra share, and then you'll receive the remaining four cents as cash. Check out my Drips Explained video to learn how to calculate the drip amount for any stock or ETF. So that covers the dividend and the MER. We also want to consider the holdings of this ETF. Let's start with the industry breakdown. This ETF contains 240 of the largest Canadian companies and is well diversified across all different sectors. Just like the Canadian market overall, XIC is dominated by financials at 32% with energy, materials, and industrials between 12 and 16% each. And that's good because all of these sectors pay out great dividends along with utilities and telecommunications with about 5% each. The only outlier is information technology, which makes up 7%. That's the only sector on this list which does doesn't pay great dividends, and that's why XIC is accidentally a dividend ETF. If you're curious about the rest, consumer staples means products that people need to buy, like food and hygiene. Consumer discretionary are the non-essentials, like electronics. Looking at the individual holdings, we have 240 of the largest Canadian companies, weighted by market cap. Here we have the eight biggest players, RBC and TD at 6% each, then Enbridge, Scotiabank, Brookfield, Canadian National Railways, Shopify, and BMO around 3% each. You'll notice this fund is spread out pretty evenly. It isn't dominated by any one stock, which is a good thing. Remember, 32% of the fund was in financials, which makes sense since four out of the top eight stocks are banks. If we kept going, the next 20 stocks have a weight between one and 2%. So this ETF definitely has the best diversification. Any big company you can think of is probably here. Looking at the share price over the last three years, we can see a very clear upward trend. As you can imagine, we saw a huge drop in the market crash of March 2020, but in a matter of months, this ETF was able to fully recover, and now we are back to all-time highs. That's because this fund is investing in the most secure and established Canadian companies, and these are quality stocks that you want to hold onto for long-term capital appreciation, all while collecting a great dividend along the way. This is important. Whenever I'm talking about dividend yields in this video, I'm talking about the trailing 12 months, or TTM yield. So for XIC, it has a TTM yield of 2.4%. That means that if you add up all of its dividends over the past 12 months, divided by the current share price, you get 2.4%. But many ETFs don't pay consistent dividends. They can change on a month to month basis. So it's important to use the TTM yield to give you a reliable expectation of the entire year's dividends. The alternative is to use the forward yield, where you assume that the current month's dividend will continue for the rest of the year. So if the dividend changes every month, the forward yield will swing up and down. In the case of XIC, its dividend just increased this month, so its forward yield is higher than the TTM yield, about 2.5%, but I don't bank on this number. Just to be safe, I recommend using the TTM yield. It's more reliable. Next up, we have the Vanguard ETF VDY. VDY is essentially a specialized subset of XIC, focusing only on the companies that pay a high dividend. XIC contained the 240 largest companies in Canada, but VDY contains only 40 of these companies who pay out a high dividend, most over 3%. So you won't see any tech companies like Shopify, but VDY will offer a significantly higher dividend at 3.4%, and this dividend is paid out every month, so you'll get steady passive income. VDY is one of those ETFs whose dividend fluctuates month to month, so we are using the TTM yield of 3.4%. And again, this yield is lower than usual because the fund is trading at all time highs. VDY usually pays a yield above 4%, so we should expect an increase soon as the share price grows. The VDY fund requires a bit more work and maintenance than XIC. 
They're not just tracking the largest Canadian companies. They also need to filter out the ones which can pay high dividends and companies can raise or cut their dividends anytime. Because of this extra work, VDY charges a higher management fee than XIC with an MER of 0.22%. That's definitely higher, but it's still less than 10 times the price of the average mutual fund. Mutual funds charge an MER between 2 and 3%, so only paying 0.22% is a much better option. If you own $1,000 in VDY, you'll be paying $2.20 a year in fees. Again, this fee is built into the share price, or I like to take it out of our dividend income. VDY pays out a dividend yield of 3.4%, minus an MER of 0.22%, we get an annual net income of 3.18%. This is still a great source of passive income while gaining decent exposure of the Canadian market. Since this dividend is paid monthly, we'll be getting smaller dividend payments, but more frequently. This makes it harder to qualify for a drip. We'll need about $16,600. With a yield of 3.4%, we'll get $564 a year in dividends or $47 a month. That's enough to buy ourselves a free share every month. That's 12 free shares every year. I know $16,000 is a lot of money, but remember, you don't need to reach this drip threshold all at once. I'm certainly not there yet. Invest what you can and slowly build up to this over the course of years. In the meantime, you'll be earning great passive income and capital gains. Looking at the industry breakdown, BDY is massively focused on the financial industry with over 57% of the fund invested in banks and insurance companies. Energy companies like oil and gas make up 24% and the remainder is spread between communication, utilities, and materials, all of which are dividend heavy. This fund is far less diversified than XIC. And even though the Canadian banks are some of the strongest investments in the world, having too much of your money tied up in one single industry can be risky. So don't rely entirely on VDY. Make sure you also own the other ETFs on this list to get better diversification. Looking at the largest holdings of VDY, they are very similar to XIC, except that they took away low dividends like Shopify and Canadian National Railway, and instead bumped up more banks and energy companies. VDY as a whole is dominated by the financial sector with 57%. And that makes sense since both TD and Royal Bank alone make up 13% each. That's huge and very heavy weighting on just a handful of stocks. In fact, the big five banks are all in the top seven holdings. And the top five holdings make up almost 50% of the entire fund. This ETF is very concentrated and much less diversified, so keep that in mind. Looking at the price chart of VDY over the past three years, it definitely shows more volatility since it depends heavily on only a handful of stocks, but again, we see an overall upward trend. As before, it was able to fully recover from the 2020 market crash very quickly and is back to all-time highs. The graph definitely mirrors the Canadian banks overall, so you can expect to see long-term capital gains along with those reliable dividends every month. At number three, we have XEI from BlackRock. XEI is very similar to VDY in that it is a subset of the XIC holdings. XEI contains 75 of the largest Canadian companies which pay out a high dividend. VDY, on the other hand, only contained 40 of these companies. So XEI is already more diversified. And XEI right now has the same dividend yield of 3.4%, and this dividend is paid out monthly. Again, we're using the TTM yield here. XEI tends to increase its dividend every two months, so we'll definitely expect another increase soon. As before, this 3.4% yield is lower than usual since the Canadian market is at all time highs. Normally, XEI has a dividend yield well above 4%. Like VDY, this ETF requires more work to manage and it has an identical MER of 0.22%. So if you own $1,000 in XEI, you'll be paying $2.20 a year in fees. With a dividend of 3.4% and an MER of 0.22%, that gives us a net income of 3.18% collected monthly. To qualify for a drip, you'll need to own $9,920 in XEI. With a yield of 3.4%, that gives us $337 a year in dividends or $28.10 a month. That's enough to buy an extra share of XEI every single month or 12 shares per year. If you've seen my members only videos, you know that I especially love XEI because of its low share price. XEI only costs $28 per share. So whenever I have at least $28 in cash, I buy myself a share or two of XEI. With Quest Trade, I don't pay commission fees at all when I buy ETFs. So instead of sitting on cash, which loses value due to inflation, I spend my excess cash on shares of XEI. If you'd like to see exactly which stocks and ETFs I'm invested in and to help support my channel, 
hit that join button down below to gain access to my exclusive videos like my TFSA and RRSP portfolio reveal and to see what stocks I'm buying every month. The membership program will cost you $5 a month, but please don't feel pressured to join. Watching my videos and leaving a comment and a thumbs up is more than enough. And don't just blindly copy what I do, but I hope that seeing my portfolio will offer some guidance, especially if you're just getting started. XEI is very similar to VDY in terms of the dividend yield and the MER, but the biggest difference is their holdings. XEI contains 75 companies and it's spread out more equally, focusing less on the financial sector and more so on energy. You can see that energy and financials are equal at 30%. Compare this to VDY, which had a whopping 57% in financials. By stepping away from the financial industry, XEI is able to gain more exposure in telecommunications, real estate, and utilities. And so it is definitely more diversified and more representative of the overall Canadian market. Looking at the top 10 holdings, you can see once again that XEI is more equally spread out. In fact, all of the top 10 holdings are about 5% in weight. So the top 10 make up 50% of the fund. Compare this to VDY, where the top five made up 50% of the fund, and TD and RBC were 13% each. Clearly, XEI is more evenly distributed without being dominated by any one stock. Looking at the stock chart over the last three years, again, we see a clear upward trend with a remarkable recovery after the 2020 crash. Once again, this ETF is trading at all time highs, but I will continue to invest in this ETF as the Canadian market as a whole continues to grow. That will earn me fantastic capital gains in the long term while collecting that passive income every month along the way. So there you have it. Those are the best dividend ETFs in Canada. XIC has the lowest yield, but the widest exposure of the entire Canadian market. VDY has a higher yield and pays up monthly income, but it is heavily concentrated in the financial sector. XCI also has a high yield paid monthly, and it is more evenly weighted between the energy and financial sector. I personally own all three of these ETFs, and even though there's overlap between them, it's important to diversify and gain exposure of the entire Canadian market, rather than trying to pick the best one. And to actually buy these ETFs, I recommend Questrade, my favorite online broker, and they won't charge you any commission fees when you buy ETFs. To get started with Questrade, click my referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission free and that saves you $50 plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. Thanks for watching guys and be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Canadian T-shirt, click my link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.